God is a good God. Astvats, bari astvats. And Jesus is Lord. And today we give Him thanks. And we pay honor to Him. It's all about Jesus. And what He does for us. So we bless you today. And I honor your pastor and his family. The leaders of this church. And we have been blessed to be here. And I trust, I trust before this day is over that you will have a special visitation from the Holy Spirit. Put your hands out like this. Lord Jesus. Yes. Here I am today. All I have. I give to you. I trust you, Lord. You're the source of my life. I believe you today. For all good things come from God. I receive my portion of your presence and your Holy Spirit today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I am delighted today to be traveling with two very outstanding Men. I have known this family for almost 50 years. As, a, as I shared uh, last evening and the evening before, this is a ministry family. Their father in America is 93 years old. He has, he has been a pastor for 70 years. He has four sons that are in ministry. Three of those are pastors. One works as an evangelist. Between the, the five, they have over 200 years of ministry experience. That's amazing. We, ought give, we ought to give God a praise for that. They also have something that's very unique to the Armenian families. There's eight brothers and five sisters. Thirteen altogether. So when they have family reunion, they have to rent half the town out so they can have room. We're blessed to have the oldest son and the youngest son with us today. I'm going to ask Pastor Ron if he'll come and greet you today. Greetings this afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How many is rejoicing? Say everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. We have a reason to rejoice. Amen. We have enjoyed our time with you the last few days. Your pastor, his family have treated us so well. We're so thankful for what God is doing. 
But we are very excited about what God is getting ready to do. I'm reminded of a word that he spoke to Jeremiah. He said, call unto me. And I will answer thee. And I will show you great and mighty things. I believe there's some great and mighty things in the future. I celebrate our victories of yesterday. But I am anticipating greater victories in our tomorrow. Today I am believing and trusting that God is going to meet us in a special way. And I just want to encourage you that he is still our source. He's still our strength. He is still the one that makes a way for us. So don't be weary and well doing. Yes. For in due season, we will reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Pastor Phil. I'm not dead yet. Yes, dead, Merak's chant. I'm alive in the Holy Spirit. Yes, Kentani and Sur Pokum. All is well. And I'm not mad at the church. I'm not angry with the church. God loves us. So I love the church. The church is the most precious thing in this earth. We are the church of the living God.
Because Jesus is in me. Amen. Jesus is in me. Pardon me for getting all emotional. I'm an emotional older man. But Holy Spirit has made me emotional. I know his love. I know his love. I know his love. Do you know his love? Oh, he loves you today. And since I've been here this week, my family has gotten larger. You are now my family. Yes. And I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Phil. Yeah, we'll have a reunion someday soon. We'll have a reunion in heaven. Yes, I want to leave my information with the pastor for us to God. We've been, uh, we've been having some wonderful times this week. I I'm very, I'm very appreciative of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank these dear ladies and gentlemen who have led us in worship. It's been amazing. And I appreciate my good friends, Pastor Ron, Pastor Phil. For sharing with us and ministering to us. And we've been we've been sharing and talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is important. The American preacher of years ago, Dwight L. Moody. Me America you might as well try to hear without ears. Or breathe without lungs. As to live a Christian life without the Spirit of God in your heart. There's a difference in saying I'm a Christian and being a follower of Christ. We have a lot of religion in the world today. But as Brother Phil was referring to the church, it's made up of people all over the world. Different shapes. Different forms. Different colors. Different cultures. If Jesus is in our heart, we are a part of his church. Jesus came to reveal the will of God to the world. Jesus came to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. Not in buildings and lands. But in the hearts of men and women. Many times he told those around him. My kingdom is not of this earth. As you view a kingdom. And so Jesus has given you an eye. 
something in our heart that creates a happy expectation of things to come. The best is yet to come. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. In John chapter 14, I will pray the Father and he will send you another coffin. And that word another from the Greek means exactly the same. A duplicate. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit. As my former boss, Oral Roberts, who is in heaven now, he said the Holy Spirit is simply Jesus' other self. I understand that through theological studies, the terminology is called pneumatology. The, the study of the Spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, You must be born again. Nicodemus responded through his intellect. I'm old man. How can I be born? How can I enter into my mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. You see the trees and the leaves. And you can see them sway back and forth. But you can't see the wind. And therefore, we must be born again by the Spirit. Jesus walked this earth for three and a half years. He chose 12 men. And he poured into them. And we know that one of them was a deceptive man that didn't receive what Jesus gave. But from the small group of men, we have the church today throughout the world. And if you look through your, your, your physical eyes, you'll see parts of the world where you think, where, where is the church? But it's there. It's alive. It's well. And what we've experienced today, and what we've experienced the last couple nights, is his presence of the Holy Spirit confirming his word that the church is alive and well. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave his disciples a instruction in Luke 24, 49. Tear ye in Jerusalem till ye be endued with power on high. That was another promise he made. The prayer of John 14, I will pray the Father, he gave him a promise. Luke 24, Luke 24, he repeated the promise. And after appearing before them for over 40 days, over 500 people saw him. Before he ascended to heaven. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. 
after you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power to be my witnesses in your world, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very end of the world. What is your Jerusalem today? Where you live is your Jerusalem. In America, my town is my Jerusalem. My state is my Judea. My country is my Samaria. And I'm here today as being part of the world. To take the message of Jesus. God has a purpose. He has a plan. And He has given us the power and ability to carry out the plan. Who is the Holy Spirit? What did the Holy Spirit do in creation? What's the Holy Spirit's role in conversion and regeneration? What's the Holy Spirit do with gifts? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the scripture says that the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water. There was Father, and he spoke the word which was Jesus. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, brooded over the words that God spoke. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. He's, he's not simply a force like electricity. He's a member of the Godhead. He has an intelligence. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. I have not seen the ears not heard neither has entered into the hearts of man the good things that God has prepared for them but the spirit reveals them the Holy Spirit has feelings in Ephesians 4.30 Paul said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. He had a will. And he prays. The Holy Spirit prays. Saying praises or prayer? He prays. Romans 8. When we know not what to pray for, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Do you understand the importance of a relationship with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit can be lied to. We see that in Acts chapter 5. In the early church, when they were told to bring all their possessions, there was a man called Ananias. And the greed in his heart, he kept back what he had. And when he brought it before the disciples, Peter said, have you given your all? Oh, yes, I have given Peter said, you've not only lied to men, but you've lied to God. You've lied to the Holy Spirit. And we know what happened to Ananias. And a short time after that, his wife appeared in and she didn't know. And so they asked her the same question. And she gave the same answer. Oh yes, we've given it all. 
Peter said, the men's feet that carried your husband out are waiting at the door to carry you out. So the Holy Spirit is a person. And so we must understand the importance of our relationship with him. We must understand that he is here for our benefit. We must understand that he does nothing or says nothing that does not glorify God. And so we have the word of God to encourage us. We have the word of God to direct us. The Holy Spirit was here before the day of Pentecost. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 I, I share that with you. Job said in chapter 33 of Job The Spirit of God hath made me God formed man out of the dust of the earth And he breathed life into us and that life is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was active in the Old Testament. When God gave Moses the pattern to build the tabernacle. Moses selected individuals that would help in the construction of the tabernacle. And we find one example in Exodus 31. God instructed Moses to call out a man by the name of Bezelia. God said, I have filled him with my spirit for this purpose. Now, it's different than what the church enjoys the filling of the Holy Spirit today. This, this is a temporary thing. David prayed in Psalms 51, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So the Holy Spirit has been around from the beginning. The Holy Spirit works in our salvation. How did you feel before you gave your heart to Jesus? Did you sense the convicting presence of the Holy Spirit? Did you wake up one day and realize, oh, I, I don't feel right, I, I, I'm a sinner? That was the Holy Spirit working in your heart. That was the Holy Spirit convicting you of your wrongdoing and of your sin. And then at conversion, we need the Holy Spirit to be saved. That's where the difference is at. There's a difference in just being called a Christian. First Corinthians 12, 13 says these words. For by one, for by one spirit, we are baptized in the body of Christ. It's not what I do. It's not my works. We're not saved by works as Ephesians says. But we're saved by grace. And when the Holy Spirit delivers that grace to you and I. And when the convicting presence of God convicts us of our sins. And when we willingly. When we willingly say Lord I repent. I receive Jesus as my Savior. 
singur pe zi. The Holy Spirit touches us into the body of Christ. And we become a new creature. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. God wants us to walk in the newness of life. As the apostles and the early church gathered in the upper room, instructed by God. And when the time was fully come, there appeared tongues of cloven fire over them. There was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That was the first mass manifestation of God's presence on this earth. And from, from that humble beginning of 120, through the years, the church is growing. And it will continue to grow until Jesus comes. Yes, that first experience of the Holy Ghost was miraculous. But you know, it wasn't long until they had another experience. If you read just a few chapters in the book of Acts, I think it's somewhere around chapter 4. These, these same individuals were gathered in the room together. And there were many others who had gotten saved by Peter's preaching. In, in fact, if I read the Bible correctly, I think 3,000 got saved after one sermon he preached. And so they were all gathered there in that room together. And you know what happened? The Holy Spirit showed up again. And they were all filled again with the Holy Spirit. So God gives you and I the opportunity. As we have relationship with Him. We can be being filled constantly. Focus on God's Word. Focus on His promises. Don't focus on your challenges. Don't focus on your problems. But focus on the fact that God has promised that He would never leave us. Because his word tells us that. This is the confidence I have. If I ask anything in his name, he hears me. Yes, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you as orphans. But I will give you the promise. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit. Magnificent buildings and 
things that man has built. But they're only temporary. Because heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will not pass away. <laughs> Jesus has imparted you and I. He's given us a new life. Jesus has imparted to you and I a well of freshness. The woman at the well, you know the story? Jesus said, Woman, give me the drink. Wait, how comes you being a Jew speaking to me? I'm a Samaritan. We don't talk to each other. Jesus said, if you knew who it was that asked you for a drink, you would ask me for a drink. And it would be like a well in your innermost being. Springing up the everlasting life. And instead of the woman saying, Oh, I want that well. She got religious on the Lord. Well, our fathers say we're supposed to worship in the mountains. You do it this way, we do it that way. You see what religion does? Religion confuses the truth of God's word. God is not here to promote religion. He's here to promote relationship. Jesus wants to be in your heart. The Holy Spirit wants to be in your heart. He wants to walk alongside of you. He is the paraclete. He is the one who goes alongside the help. If you're saved today, and if Jesus is Lord, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. And wherever you go, He will go with you. He is there to lead you. He is there to guide you. He is there to teach you. And He is there to help you. The Holy Spirit is continually at work. Bringing men and women to Jesus. He illuminates our life. It's not about our good works. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Holy Spirit turns the light on in the darkness. And we as individuals, when we see who we are and where we're at, we have a will. And we make a decision. And when he presents Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to you and I, and we simply confess we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord the Bible says you shall be saved into the body of Christ we're brothers and sisters and you see he prepares our way for us he gives us gifts. He makes it easy for you and I. Paul said it's not only that Jesus ascended, but first descended. He let captive be captive. And he gave gifts to men. Come on, gifts. <laughs> These are gifts. <laughs> he gave apostles, <laughs> prophets, 
evangelists, pastors, teachers. And these are the gifts to the church. What kind of gifts? For the perfecting of the body. To edify the body. To help you. To encourage you. To train you. To prepare you. That you can go out in the world and do the work of the ministry. You can tell other people about the good things that God has done for you. These are merely men. We're not perfect. But God loves you. And that's why this man's been in ministry for over 50 years. That's why this family, their father's 93 years old. And you talk to him today. You know what he wants to talk about? He don't want to talk about fishing. He don't want to talk about hunting. He wants to know if you pray today. Have you talked to the Lord today? Are you living a good life today? So God has given gifts in the form of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to help you. Let's give the gifts of God a good day. But certain gifts into the body. And the Holy Spirit is the overseer of those gifts. First Corinthians 12. Talks about the gifts and miracles. Healings. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Faith. Discernment. These are the things that we need to navigate through this life. We don't communicate. We don't communicate with God through our intellect. We communicate with God through our spirit. He's the Paraclete. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the one who goes alongside. The very same fire that fell on the day of Pentecost. The very same power that filled the 120 in the upper room. The very same force that motivated them to go into all the world with the gospel. It's the same power we have today. It's the same force we have today. It's the same presence we have today. The Holy Spirit is alive and well in the earth. Habakkuk said this. The will of God is that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord fill the whole earth. As the waters covers the sea, the knowledge of the Lord shall fill the whole earth. What's our assignment today? What's your assignment today? I understand you live in a different part of the world. I understand you live in a different culture. I understand there are different challenges. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same power that the early church enjoyed, we have it today. So I encourage you, whatever your difficulties are, believe the word of God. Allow faith to rise up in your innermost being. 
Sana. And quote the word of God at your challenges. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. We have opportunity to communicate with God every day. We have opportunity to put our hand in his hand. Watches over his people. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. The thief has come to steal. Kill Spani and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come yes, yeka, that you duk, might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. My God is a good God. Your God is a good God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. 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 And so the Holy Spirit is here. He was present in creation. He will work throughout the Old Testament and the different lives of individuals. There was, temp there was temporary infillings of the Holy Spirit to help them do particular things. So what is the difference? What is the difference of the Holy Spirit then and the Holy Spirit now? Back then he was with them. But he's not only with us. But He's in us. See, I can fill this glass with water. And it's filled. But if I had a bucket of water, I could set the glass down in the bucket of water. And it would not only be filled, but it would be immersed. It would be surrounded. And that's the difference today. There's no restriction in the movement of God's presence. Wherever you go, He goes. Whatever you face, He faces. Whatever you need, He is there to supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. Do you love Jesus today? Are you thankful for the Holy Spirit today? 